Another lazy cooking video from a popular YouTuber. Is this really worth eating? My husband, who hardly shows any interest in our family, has made it a daily routine to belittle the time-saving recipes I've worked hard to come up with. One day, I was informed by an acquaintance that they saw my husband walking closely with another woman, which was not me. When I confronted him he said, I come home tired from work every day and you do whatever you want. And now you suspect me of cheating. What kind of wife are you? Do you have any proof? That night I pretended to clean so Johan wouldn't get suspicious, and then I snuck out to the car in the garage. The dashboard, back seat, trunk, the interior light dimly illuminated the inside of the car. Without thinking much, I pulled down the driver's side sun visor. What's this? There I found an unaddressed brown envelope tucked in. Something felt off, so I decided to take a look. Inside was a photo of an unknown woman holding a baby with a broad smile, a divorce paper, and a letter to Johan. The letter was addressed to Johan. It's a boy, now we can get divorced. I read Johan's name was already filled out on the divorce paper but not in his handwriting. Ah, I see, it's already over, well, if you wanted to end that quickly, I'll make it quick, just as you wish. At that moment, my heart went cold. This was a betrayal against me and our daughter. I made my decision. I'm going to get back at him. My name is Susie Irvin. I am a cooking YouTuber and mother to my six-year-old daughter Rachel. Cooking has been my forte since my student days. And leveraging that talent, I launched a YouTube channel a few years ago. Despite the hustle and bustle of a housewife's life, I've showcased numerous easy time-saving recipes and innovative arrangements using commercial ready-made meals that can get boring. Operating the channel passionately while balancing family life has gained popularity over the years, and I am now cherished by many followers. This turned out nicely. I wonder if this will bring joy to many people again today. Today too, I was ready to film a new video, fully utilizing my cooking skills. However, behind the shining facade in front of the camera, there was something troubling me. My expression dims between the peeling dishes. I'll be late again today. You're always working so hard, don't worry about home. I smile back at Johan's words, but behind that smile lies loneliness. Johan, my husband, is a manager responsible for planning and development at a home appliance manufacturer. He is dedicated to his work, highly trusted by his subordinates, and focused solely on his career recognized by his superiors as a rising star. Ever since he assumed his managerial role a few years ago, his return home has been late into the night, and he appears busy even on holidays. He's been getting home later and later these days, and sometimes he doesn't even come home at all. I wonder if he notices my forced smile. No, he couldn't possibly notice. Johan, who has paid little attention to family matters since our marriage, has never helped with household chores or child care, leaving me to bear the burden alone. Nevertheless, I can't say I'm unhappy. Mom, when is dad coming home? The one asking anxiously, is my daughter Rachel. Yes, I have a lovely daughter. Her presence always gives me strength. Hmm, it looks like he'll be late again today. Sorry, I answer awkwardly. Rachel's expression quickly turns to one of sadness. It's understandable. She's six years old and still very much in her clingy phase. Just the other day, she confided in me that her friend had talked about how their dad took them to an amusement park. Is Johan and Rachel becoming more distant from each other? The feeling unbearable, I stroke Rachel's head. Your husband works late, and you get to be free, huh? I don't care if you're a YouTuber or whatever, doing whatever you like. Glancing at us sideways and bearging in was my mother-in-law, Nanny. My expression tightens. Here we go again. 
My mother-in-law always criticized my lifestyle and blames me for everything possible. I barely managed to suppress a deep sigh. Another source of my troubles is my mother-in-law, who lives nearby. She's widowed, living alone now. Nanny has never shown any understanding for the profession of a YouTuber, looking down on my job. So much for your time-saving recipes. They're just shortcuts, aren't they? I hear this all the time, but the criticism hurts all the more because I'm passionate about my beloved cooking. Yet despite her criticisms, Nancy, wanting to save on food expenses, comes over to eat the meals I prepare, even though she wasn't invited. Basically, your marriage has never been right. You can't even produce a proper heir. What use are you? A girl will just end up marrying, and she won't be able to continue the family line. Yan got the short end of the stick by marrying someone like you. My mother-in-law, in her sixties, stubbornly clings to old-fashioned beliefs that a male child should carry on the family legacy, treating Rachel coldly. Even the pure smile of her granddaughter means nothing to her. I have to be strong. I'm a mother after all. That's how I always get through it. I'm home, welcome back. Late at night, Johan finally came home. The few times my husband comes home, he does nothing but ridicule the time-saving recipes I've made. Another lazy cooking video from a popular YouTuber, huh? Is this really worth eating? Every time we talk about cooking, my husband leaves deep wounds in my heart. I'll be going to my mother's place tomorrow. Tonight again, it seems my husband plans to stay over at his mother's house again. His coming home has become a rare occurrence. Can't be helped since dad passed away, mom has been alone. What if something happens to her? I'm not going because I want to, don't you understand a son's duties? Well it can't be helped. We only have a daughter and you're going to make another one of your quick meals tomorrow, right? Even when he does come home, he shows little interest in our family and mostly belittles the time-saving recipes I put so much effort into. I understand what Johan is saying. As an only son, he's probably trying to take the place of my father-in-law who passed away early. However, the frequency of his stays at his mother's house has been increasing. Is it really necessary to take care of his mother so frequently, or is there another reason? I couldn't help but think deeper about the reason. One day when I went shopping in the neighborhood, I ran into someone. Oh Mrs. Irvin, hello Mrs. Abbott lovely weather, isn't it? She's a neighbor of my mother-in-law and gets along well with her. I had tea with your mother-in-law the other day. Oh, is that so? Actually I shouldn't speak too loudly about this, but I saw your husband Johan, walking with a woman the other day. What? And they went into your mother-in-law's house together. Do you know her? She was someone I didn't recognize, so I thought it was unusual. Is that so? Maybe someone from work or someone related to caregiving perhaps? Right right sorry, don't mind me. I hurried away, my heart pounding and my voice quivering, trying desperately to hide it. Who is she? What's going on? My heart was in turmoil, a mix of disbelief and a sensation of foreboding intertwined, leaving me unsure what to believe. The restlessness lingered even after I returned home. Seeing me unlike myself, Rachel looked at me anxiously and asked, Mom, what's wrong? Are you okay? Oh, no, I'm fine, just a bit tired. Now let's get you to bed early so you're not late for school tomorrow. I couldn't stand it any longer. I wanted to know the truth for myself. Seeing Rachel only strengthened my determination. I'll ask my mother-in-law tomorrow and find out for Rachel's sake. The next morning, after seeing Rachel off to school, I drove to my mother-in-law's house. My heart was racing and my hands were sweaty. Upon arriving I took a deep breath before getting out of the car. My hand trembled as I rang the doorbell. 
When my mother-in-law opened the door, she looked at me with a complex expression. What brings you here? So early, um, mother-in-law, I'm sorry for the sudden visit. There's something I wanted to ask. I lacked the courage to ask directly but finally brought up the sighting of my husband with an unknown woman. My mother-in-law's response was unexpected. Ah, that actually, while hesitating, she began to explain the truth. My husband had been struggling with work stress and knowing this, my mother-in-law became worried. She knew a friend's daughter Julia, who was a counselor and introduced her to my husband. I think you understand Susie, your husband is going through a lot. He has many worries you might not be aware of. He's a rising star at work, and this is a critical time for him. That's why it's best to leave these matters to professionals. I still had doubts about the truth of their relationship. I couldn't just take my mother-in-law's word for it and decided I needed to talk directly with my husband. On the drive home, I deeply contemplated what I should do next and what lies ahead for our family. One thing was clear, I couldn't just do nothing. Through a conversation with my husband, I had to uncover the truth and consider our family's future. That was the only path left for me. The next night, when my husband returned home, I brought up the subject to confirm the truth. Someone from your mother's neighborhood mentioned they saw you walking with a woman who isn't me. They said she was introduced by your mother. What's all this about? Yeah, that's right. I'm exhausted from work, and all you do is whatever you want. When I come home, all I see are your so-called time-saving meals, which are nothing but shortcuts. I've been consulting her about my frustrations with this lifestyle. She's a counselor, a specialist in her field. She understands the pressures of my job, and I've been seeing her for a while now. He admitted to her existence without any hint of remorse. You who just do whatever you like wouldn't understand. With that, he quickly retreated to his study. A few days later, I received a call from Rachel's tutoring school. They couldn't confirm the payment for this month's tuition. It was supposed to be automatically debited but the payment hadn't gone through, and they asked me to check what's going on. There should be about $80,000 in that account. It doesn't make sense for the payment to fail. I hurriedly grabbed my card to check my account, confused and anxious. I checked the bank account balance and was shocked at what I saw. What is this? The $80,000 we have painstakingly saved up was completely gone. This money was critically important, saved over the years since our marriage for Rachel's education and our retirement. I immediately called Johan to find out what happened. The tutoring school called, saying Rachel's tuition hasn't been paid. When I checked the bank balance, the $80,000 that was in here is gone. What happened? Did you use it for something? Yeah, I used it for counseling fees. Seeing a specialist is expensive, it can't be helped. I often had to ask the counselor to adjust her schedule for clinic closures or after my overtime. It's a hassle, so I couldn't just go empty-handed, he said. I was dumbfounded by how the money was spent. He said the $80,000 went towards counseling fees, expensive dinners, and brand name gifts. How could you? I can't believe this. Blame it on whatever you want. It's all your fault. As I tried to say something, he hung up the phone abruptly. It was clear that their relationship wasn't merely that of a counselor and client. That night, determined to find evidence of infidelity, I decided to search his car. Right, the car got all sandy when I took Rachel to the park last time. I'll clean it up. I pretended to clean so Johan wouldn't get suspicious. Then I snuck off to the car in the garage. I checked the dashboard, back seat, trunk, the dim-lit interior, light illuminating the inside. Casually, I pulled down the driver's side sun visor. What's this? There, tucked away, was an unaddressed brown envelope. I got this weird feeling of unease. I hesitantly looked inside.
Inside were a photo of an unknown woman holding a baby with a broad smile, a divorce paper, and a letter to Johan. The letter was addressed to Johan. A boy is born. Now we can get divorced. I read Jan's name was already filled out on the divorce paper, but not in his handwriting. Ah, so that's how it is. It was over long ago. If you wish to end it that quickly, I'll make it quick, just as you wish. In that moment, my heart went cold. This was a betrayal against me and my daughter. I made a decision. I'm going to get back at him one day. My husband casually mentioned, I'm going to my mother's place today. Okay, I thought, thinking it was likely another visit to his affair partner. I felt no loneliness. This is it. The only chance. After confirming my husband had left, I packed up our belongings and Rachel and I left the house. Soon after, I submitted the divorce papers that were in the envelope. This won't be the end of it, I took further steps. It was necessary to settle things properly. I secretly commissioned an investigation for property division claims. There was no worry about not finding anything as I knew he was guilty. Soon, the results came back revealing the affair. On the days Jan claimed to be staying at his mother's, he was actually dining out with a woman from the photo, entering an apartment building two stations away and not coming out until the morning. Just as I thought, I wasn't surprised. Through a lawyer, I demanded a property division and the return of the $80,000 which he had spent. Immediately, I received a call from Jan. What the hell are you doing? How dare you act on your own? Don't mess with me. You were the one who betrayed us first. That money was for Rachel, your daughter. You're her parent after all. It's only fair. Don't think you can get away with this. I never wanted a daughter from the start. Just like you, always cooking. I was sick of it. I'm better off without you. If paying that petty cash cuts ties with you, I'll pay it all. Jan ranted over the phone, sounding desperate. He's keeping his word and paying for the division of property, childhood expenses, and schooling all in one go. The promised amount was deposited into my account later. Hey, I've paid the promised money. Are you satisfied now? Jan contacted me. Julia, unlike some YouTuber like you, cooks lavish meals every day, not those lazy ones. And mom is happy, saying it's good that a competent wife came along. I'm relieved to be rid of you. I should have divorced you sooner. With a divorce, a weight was lifted off my shoulders. No more snide remarks from my mother-in-law and no more worrying about Johan who barely came home. Most importantly, Rachel wouldn't have to suffer anymore. From then on, Rachel and I led a peaceful life. However, three months later, my ex-husband suddenly summoned me to my former in-law's house. And during the familiar living room, I saw Julia holding a baby. My mother-in-law and Johan suddenly lay. Johan started to shout, Hey, cut it out will you? We've already cut ties yet you're still harassing us. What are you talking about? I have no idea what you're saying, I replied. Don't play dumb. Ever since we divorced, every project I've worked on has fallen through. The home appliances I developed aren't selling at all. I've been demoted because of this responsibility. I've even been ordered to transfer to Alaska. When I asked my boss what was going on, he told me to ask you. What are you planning? Do you hate seeing people happy that much? You're trying to ruin us, aren't you? Stop making accusations. I know nothing about it. You can deny it all you want. I'll sue you for defamation. Get ready for a huge compensation claim. What are you talking about? Fine. Do what you want, I laughed it off. Until now, in my time saving cooking videos, I had actively used and promoted the appliances Jan had planned and developed. The promotional effect of those videos was the reason Johan's appliances sold well. However, after the divorce, I saw no reason to continue using or promoting them, and decisively stopped.
Mrs. Irvin, we hope you'll agree to another tie-up with our product. I'm sorry, but I am no longer Mrs. Irvin. My husband cheated on me and he even had a child with his mistress. We have divorced so I will no longer be associated with your products. They remind me of my husband, so please refrain from contacting me in the future. Sure, here's the text punctuated and split into short paragraphs. Please don't say that. This would be a huge loss for our company. Could you possibly reconsider your decision? We'll do anything, please. Following this, the company demoted Johan to remove him from his current role. Indeed, the company had realized that the increase in sales was not due to Johan's abilities, but had instead chosen me over my incompetent husband. After I shared the whole story of my interactions with Jan's company, Johan was completely disheartened. He wasn't as loud and confident as before, and he looked surprised and couldn't come up with a reply. Oh yes, I heard something interesting lately. It was about Julia, right? She seems to be going to the department store's food hall every day. A friend of mine works there, apparently, she's been buying up ready-made dishes. What's for dinner tonight? Which store's dish did you go for? I'm sure your mother-in-law is thrilled with those luxurious ready-made meals. What? What do you mean, Julia? Hold on a minute, Julia, explain yourself. Were you deceiving me? What I mean is, you said you'd spoil me, Johan, that you'd do anything for me. That's why I agreed to be with you, liar. Hey mom, it was you who said Susie was no good and we should go for Julia. You were all happy about Julia's meals, praising how delicious they were, coming over every night for a free meal because you're too cheap to spend on your own food. And now you're trying to act all innocent. It's not even homemade, it's all store-bought. It was a complete disaster, I no longer wanted anything to do with such despicable people. With that thought, I quickly left my former in-law's house. I wish you all happiness. Five years passed, and I was approached once again by the appliance company my ex-husband used to work for, asking for a collaboration. My heart wavered. Maybe I should just say no. The thought of possibly having to deal with Johan again made me hesitant. Then I was told Mr. Irvin has resigned from the company. It seems his health hasn't been very good. But Johan has stayed with Julia, who never attempted to cook, and they continued to eat only ready-made or department store meals, without considering nutrition. They consumed meals high in salt, sugar and fat, leading to accumulating stress and a disordered lifestyle. As a result, Johan ended up gaining 66 lb, dealing with some health problems and not being able to work like before. Knowing Yan was no longer there, I decided to accept the collaboration. Mom, what's for dinner? I'll help. Thank you, Rachel. How about a potato gratin, your favorite? Yay, Mom. Tie my apron, please. You've gotten really good with a knife. Of course, I'm the daughter of a popular cooking YouTuber, right? I'm going to be a YouTuber and stream cooking when I grow up. My next goal is to come up with some easy, healthy recipes that kids can make too. I want to help out all those busy moms out there. Yes, that's right. My next stream will be a collaboration with Rachel.